to broadcast this live. All right, here we are. And uh, hey guys, welcome back. I uh, with uh, Father Ken DD and uh, I'm your host, Nikki Ray on uh, Paranormal. I always want to say crew, but it's actually Paranormal Corner. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I want to say crew. I actually accidentally did that last time. <laughs> well, I mean, it's 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 kind of like a very fluid the word crew, but you know, paranormal corner. I like it. It's like, oh, right. welcome to the paranormal crew. It's the crew. <laughs> it back to my head every time that I want to say it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, and uh, we'll be back with part of Kennedy and Q and A. Nice. All right. Nice. Do this. All right, and we're back. And we <laughs> are you live. For joining us, I'm back with Father Kennedy, and I hope you're not tired of me already. I know it's been a few times you've been on our show. I always enjoy having you with us. Oh, oh no, I never get tired of you. I, I, I actually, I quite adore you. I, I love you. I oh, think thank you're you. a very sweet individual. Uh, I mean, I think highly of you, so I, I don't get tired of you. So whenever oh, you want me to come you. on the show, I, I have no problem doing it. <laughs> Yes, awesome. Thank you for coming back. You're and welcome. of course, I have a few lists of questions here yeah. and there, and hopefully the audience will chime in. And uh, so, um, so as always, uh, I'd like to share a little bit about your background in case somebody else doesn't know uh, about you. And uh, so, as you sure. have, let me pull that up. I can't memorize all of it. <laughs> I mean, I, I could, uh, if, if you'd like, I can give you a little bit of my background. Make yeah, it easier for yeah. you. Yeah, probably for you might be better. <laughs> well, yeah. So uh, my name is uh, Kenneth Torres, Father Kenneth Torres, Archbishop, Reverend Doctor. I'm an actual doctor. I have a Doctor's of Divinity uh, from a seminary school. I have a Master's in Pastoral Counseling. I have a Bachelor's in Finance and Accounting. Uh, I'm a prior service U.S. Marine, uh, Infantry, uh, Iraq War Vet, a former government contractor, and now I am clergy. And so for me, um, I grew up experiencing a life of hauntings. Uh, I had a really bad, uh, my family had a really bad attack, a demonic attack growing up when I was 12 years old uh, in New Jersey. Uh, and that kind of changed the course of my life. It, and it kind of put me in this trajectory of knowing that there was something supernatural out there. Uh, my grandmother from my mother's side was a high priestess in Santeria which is an Afro-Caribbean practice from Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. So I grew up seeing uh, a lot of different things and experiencing a lot of different things, which most of it I think I can attribute to some of the childhood trauma that I've experienced. But some of the other things I know that I faced were, were legitimately real. And so now I am a regional director. I'm a Spanish, actually not a regional director. I'm a little bit above that. I am a division director for the Warren Legacy Foundation for Paranormal Research. I'm in charge of all of the Spanish countries. I've got 24 investigators uh, under uh, my umbrella, and I'm also a board member for the Legacy Foundation. And the Warren Legacy Foundation was created in 2014 by Lorraine Warren and her grandson, Chris McKinnell. And the idea was to have a team uh, that would be a global response team, so to speak. And, and the fact that we would just be able to um, help out Nesper originally because Nesper, everyone knows about Nesper and Tony Spera mm -hmm. and they know that he's in charge of the museum but uh, we're no longer a part of them so we are our own entity right now and we have over 60 researchers dedicated professionals worldwide and our job is to help individuals uh, understand the paranormal and uh, help minimize the fear uh, and most of our cases are really darker in nature we do deal with Extreme psychological illness, mental illness. Well, you, you know how it is. You've worked some of our cases because you're yes. a member. Yes. So, you Thank know, you. We, we deal with the real stuff. You know, we, we're not this little cookie cutter. I'm running into an abandoned building type of stuff. And, oh, here's a ghost. No, we're dealing with real poltergeist activity, real demonic activity, real possession, um, real uh, uh, curses. So, yeah, that's who I am. <laughs> 
And before we go any further, and thank you for sharing that on that note. Um, thank you. I wanted to give a shout out to our sponsors, Jandy Hill and the podcast, um, if I remember it right, <laughs> Studio Sits, Paranormal Ooh. Entertainment. Ooh. Nice, nice. Getting old is not always fun, right? I'll be 50 hey. today. I can't believe it. <laughs> I just turned. I just turned thirty nine. Uh, oh, and, happy and please, belated birthday! Thank you, and please excuse me because uh, I <laughs> have been dealing with ministry all day, and I my family just got home, so I'm just gonna munch down on a little bit of this Mexican pizza because I am hungry. So hey, if you don't mind, I, I apologize. Mean, go ahead, go yeah. ahead. <laughs> Thank you. So I just gotta get a little bite in here. <laughs> you deserve a break. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so, anyway, on that note. Yeah, let's, of course, let's, let's I like let's... to know, and of course, um, I like to know um, what uh, got you in this field in the first place. Was it from those experiences? Think, yeah, so well, you know, for me, um, I think what got me into this field is more of a calling. I experienced a lot of these yeah. things growing up. I experienced a lot of hauntings, a lot of uh, spirit activity, and I grew up. Uh, in a real religious home, uh, my family alleged, you know, we were Pentecostal, Holy Ghost fire, talking in tongues, that type of stuff. And so I was involved in spiritual deliverance at a young age, 13 years old. I was already involved with in spiritual deliverance, youth ministry, 14, 15 years old. Uh, and so for me, um, coming into this back into this was kind of like a, a, a fluke, so to speak. Uh, I saw I saw an opening and I applied and um, I was like, look, I don't have all of the you know, buttload of hours of uh, investigation hours when I've helped out like five different families. Um, I'm pretty confident in my abilities and I think I know what I'm doing. And so I applied for the foundation and I got in. Uh, And ever since then, I've been in, it's going on three years now. I think I've worked over 200 residential cases. Uh, So I think what got me into this was was a calling. It's definitely a calling and a mixture of Mm. my experiences growing up. Yeah, I agree. It's definitely a calling to be there to help people. And that's why I also went to you guys for the Warren Legacy Foundation. And I'm so stoked. I'm, even though I'm just a general member, I'm just stoked to be part of it. <laughs> no, but see, that's the thing. You're, you're, you're not just a regular member. You're a vital asset to the team. You know, every researcher, every investigator. Oh, thank you. <laughs> every member who is part of the foundation is valuable. You know, and it's, you know, we all have our different strengths and we all have our different weaknesses. Like, I don't know everything. Just because I have a real doctorate's degree and I have a master's in pastoral counseling doesn't necessarily mean that I know everything because I don't. You know, there's over 3,000 religions worldwide and we deal with different types of people every day. And that's the beauty of the foundation is our diversity. We pride ourselves in our diversity and having each member, uh, you know, contribute to this wonderful cause of, you know, what it, what it is to be a part of the Warren Legacy Foundation. Yeah, that's true. And um, can you tell us, I like to ask, um, yeah, what, what's the difference between a um, ghost hunt or an investigation? Well, I mean, I, I guess those two go kind of hand in hand. I mean, mm-hmm. and, they're in, and, and they can be integrated in a sense. I mean, when you're going on a ghost hunt, you know, you're hunting, right? Uh, hunting is more of a derogatory term. You know, you literally are investigating. Uh, and, and, I, and I think there's, you know, that's what you're doing. You're investigating, you're hunting. It's the same thing. But I think it's the intention that's behind it. Uh, hi, Linda, how are you? So it's definitely the intention uh, that's behind it and how you conduct those investigations. Like, you know, if you want to go to an abandoned building, if you want to go to a haunted attraction or, or a historical place and, you know, you want to gather evidence, that's one thing, you know. But and then going into the location and actually getting rid of that spirit, whether it be friendly, negative or whatever, that's a whole different uh, ballpark within itself. I mean, so I would say ghost hunting is still a form of, of investigation, uh, but it's more right. of um, thrill seeking, so to speak. I only like to say it's more of a formal rather than informal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rather formal and informal. That's yeah. I mean, that's a great way to put it. More formal than informal. Hey, John, how are you? Yeah. Hey, guys, welcome. Wow. Amazing. Everybody's joining in with us. Yay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah, it's important. Is it important to know the location before you go? Or... 
Yeah, I mean, okay, or... well, I, I would say, depending depending on what type of investigation it is. So let's say you are a psychic medium. Uh, yeah, thanks, Kelly. I'm eating a Mexican pizza from Taco Bell, my favorite. Um, so I think if you're a psychic, for all intents and purposes, and you are going on an investigation, that maybe the team leader shouldn't tell you what's going on. Okay. I think as a psychic medium, maybe you should, you know, we should refrain from letting you know exactly where we're going. But if you're going out for a thrill seeking, if you're going out for a ghost hunt, yeah, I mean, it's important to know where you go. But it's also important to to know as well as an investigator what you should know about the property, the history of the property, what the family is. So, I mean, it, it, it goes, it, it all depends how you look at it. Uh, but I do think that if you are psychic, and I'm sorry for being repetitious, and I'm going to bring you in on an investigation, I probably shouldn't tell you too much because I want to make sure that your readings are accurate and true. Yeah, that's true. And I prefer actually not to know much. Yeah, about, you know, I'm just saying, about right? a case or yeah. Oh, so you know, I, 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 I totally same, agree. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm I'm the same way too. Um, yeah. Uh, for me, when when I deal with cases, I, I I generally I don't like to be contaminated, right? And so when a person tells me that there's a lot of this activity going on, you know, I try to I try to erase it. I try to brush it out my mind because I I don't want I don't want preconceived notions. You know, I'm going to go in, I'm going to do my best, and I'm going to try to debunk, so to speak. Because if you go in there with these preconceived notions of, well, this happened in this corner, allegedly, and this happened in this corner, now you're going to just put that stress on you, and you're not going to have a good outcome. You're not going to have a good investigation method, I think. Yeah, like Cindy Kaza. Like Cindy Kaza. I, I think Cindy Kaza is a wonderful person. Uh, also, too, I am really good friends with April Bussett, the psychic housewife from New Jersey. She's a wonderful person as well. I love them both uh, dearly. All right, awesome. Yeah, here's another question for you. If anybody, anybody has any questions, by all means, let us know. There's also Q and Yeah, if you got if you got some questions, you know, just uh, just put them in the chat box, and I'll be happy to answer. See, I had a question and I lost. Oh, um, can you explain the different like levels of possessions? Ah, possession. So possession, um, there are different stages of possession uh, that in amongst the clergy field, uh, there is the infestation part, the infestation, manifestation, oppression, and possession. So the manifestation is when the entity starts showing little subtle signs of its presence. So you'll try, you'll start getting sulfuric smells. Uh, maybe things will end up missing, uh, but then you have the infestation when things uh, start getting a lot more worse, more egregious. You know, you're being physically attacked. You know, uh, you're being tormented. You're being tortured. You're being tricked. You're uh, being taught to believe that you're going crazy. Uh, then the oppression part. The oppression is when you are so tired and you are so weakened by this energy's activity that it's doing to you. You are now oppressed. It now has an influence on you, and now it is attached to you, literally like on your back, so to speak. And then it comes the possession part. The possession part is when essentially it's what it sounds. It's you are possessed. But how do we get to the possession part? The possession part is the part where once you are oppressed um, and you're broken down physically, mentally, psychologically, now you've allowed that entity to take full control of your mind, body, and soul. Uh, and there's another step in between, um, sometimes either before or after. So demonic entities, they are liars. I, I, I don't care what, what anybody thinks. My experience working with demonic energies, they are liars. You know what I mean? So you can't trust them. So you can have all these nice, fancy sigils. You can do all of these rituals. But you have to understand that these are powerful forces that are older than you and I since the beginning of time. And you may think that you may have control over them because you have a sigil over them or you have some type of spell that you're working on. Yeah, I was just ask you about that. But in reality, you don't. You don't. Uh, it, that's, that's a facade. You know, as human beings, how dare us think that we can control a supernatural entity that's never walked this earth? How dare us think that our measly little bodies and minds can control a supernatural being so powerful that had to be cast out of hell by God himself. 
and it, and yet it was a struggle. So do you really think that a mere person, a human being, can control a demon? No. So there's that subjugation part. The subjugation part is when you make a contract with the demon, and the demon says, if you let me in, I'm going to stop this activity. And guess what? You do it, and it doesn't happen, and you still become possessed. So that's the subjugation part. It's basically the contract, uh, the the contract, uh, the contract. So part. meaning you have to Which actually is, give it permission, right? Right. To yeah, yeah. I mean, and and, and, that, <laughs> and that's really what it is. Once once the oppression happens, once the oppression happens, and you're and you're broken down to the point where you're just tired, and you want to get these things um, out of you, that's when they start picking at your brain, and they say, "Okay, cool. Just let me in. Just let me in. Just let me in." And as soon as they do that, and as soon as they do that, that's it. It's over. All hell is right. going to break loose. Literally. 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 Hey, uh, good evening, uh, Donna. How are you? <laughs> hey, yeah, what's up? Wow, Shannon, right? Never read that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's excited. pretty easy. I always think it's pretty easy to let them in. So we have all these uh, tools, and well, tools and devices. And all well, you know, we have to just turn it over, <laughs> right? Well, easy. I mean, well, I mean, you know, you have to easy, right? I mean, yeah, it can be easy to let your guards down. It can be easy to um, be mentally weakened, but you know, it's it, ultimately it's up to the individual. That's why I always tell people every day when you wake up, make sure you protect yourself, you guard yourself, you say a prayer. Look, there's a false notion that because you're a follower of Christ or you go to church that you can't see a mental health specialist. That's a lie. That is church legalism mm -hmm. and church legalism is unbiblical. You know, church legalism kind of uh, forms the way you think. And so you have this individual who's on the pulpit. So that's why it's important to always get help physically, mentally, psychologically, and spiritually. If you take care of your physical health, if you take care of your psychological part, your, your psychological mind, you'll be okay. So if you need to see a counselor, if you need to see a therapist, by all means, go ahead and do it. It's really important and vital for you to understand that you need to be healthy and strong. And if you are healthy and strong, then you won't be subject to these attacks. Not only that, when it comes to demonic entities, they are pretty much looking for specific people. They are targeting people who have gone through extreme traumatic events, drug abuse, trauma, sexual abuse. Uh, rape, that type of stuff, uh, hurt from the church. Yeah, I wanted that. And, and, they're look, and they're looking for people who are weak, people who have never gotten the help that they've needed. And so they are now in a volatile state of mind. They are vulnerable, so that happens. You know, but then we also have to look at the fact, um, how does this happen, right? You know, we have people that are looking to dabble <laughs> with the occult. And, like, I don't have a problem with dabbling with the occult. You know, I know about the occult. That's 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 part of my degree. I have to learn different things about different religions and, and different uh, occult practice. That's, you know, I spent 10 years studying it. So when you start dabbling with the occult uh, and you start uh, actually practicing it and you're in a weakened state of mind, then you are susceptible to these supernatural forces. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it's all evil. You know, messing with the occult, I don't think, I don't say that it's all evil in nature. But these are forces that you don't know uh, their capabilities. You know, ancient Sumerian, uh, ancient Judaic, uh, you know, we have Hindi, we have Buddhist. There's so many different beings, elemental, spiritual things out there that even if you don't believe and you are weakened and you attempt communication, you can still come under some type of spirit influence or possession. Yeah, yeah sure. I believe we have our first question here. Is there anyone qualified to help with demon side of mind weakness? Uh, well, I mean, honestly, Linda, going back to to my original statement, you know, mental health professional, get counseling, seek counseling, talk to your pastor, talk to a chaplain. You know, once, you know, you have that spiritual fortification and you protect yourself and you ground yourself, then you'd be okay. You know, um, and that's the truth, you know, um, and there's also the thought process that we deal with our own demons. Dealing with our own demons could just be dealing with our own traumas. You know, the truth is that demonic possession is highly rare. And when people throw the word demons out there, we have to be really, 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 really careful that we are not putting out a false, uh, we're not putting out false information out there. I, I don't like doing that because, as I mentioned, demonic possession is highly rare. 
90% of the time, you're going to be dealing with an individual that's under psychosis that has an untreated mental illness. You know, they're bipolar, they're schizophrenic, uh, they have disassociative identity disorder. So there's many different things. So we always want to look for the natural first. Um, there's yeah, also the thought. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was, I was going to say, there's also the thought that, you know, mental illness can be a form of spiritual affliction, which I, I believe it can be uh, to a certain extent. But I believe in modern science and, and I believe that modern medicine and getting psychological help, you can take care of yourself and you can avoid these things. Yeah. And and that's just my experience, you know, from doing this over 15 years. You know, everybody's experiences are different. But the truth is, a lot of people are going to want to talk. There's people that are going to want and not listen to me and they're going to want to listen to that famous YouTube celebrity who doesn't know anything about anything. And then they're going to risk their lives and they're going to come under possession just because you have a million followers, you know, doesn't mean that it's always reputable. You know, I, I always keep to myself. Uh, I'm very truthful in my approach of how I say things and how I do things. So I'm going to take a quick bite of my pizza real quick. I am so yes, sorry. True. And I uh, kind of take the words out of my mouth when uh, mm. we have this modern day age, at least now we have the doctors and the resources you know, the technology to help diagnose a particular disorder. Yeah. Rather than being, yeah. uh, you know, what you know, what he's sharing. <laughs> well, even, uh, even, like the, back even, then, they, well, I mean, yeah, back then, you know, um, <laughs> everybody was possessed. It was all witchcraft and um, mm -hmm. people didn't understand medicine. They didn't understand the mind. So they automatically assumed. And granted, there possibly could have been instances where, there really truly was some sort of magic going on but you know it's kind of hard to tell because we don't have any historical evidence or documents we don't have any psychological evaluations on file because none of that stuff existed back then so we just have to be really 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 careful on how we approach these things that's true and i have a question that's in my mind that i was wondering can curses be a start of a haunting can it how can it be resolved? yeah yeah, well, I mean, uh, you know, there's different types of curses. There's generational curses. Uh, you know, there's there's generational curses. There's curses that people inflict upon you uh, through haunted objects. Um, so, I mean, I think curses can always be broken. No doubt curses can be broken. But, you know, we also have to look at, you know, what the origin of the curse was. You know, uh, was it an object? Was it the intention? So, but I do think that curses can... Um, manifests itself in a way to where there is paranormal or unexplained phenomena in your house. But once again, it's always about getting back to the underlying issue, trying to find out, you know, what exactly it was uh, that, that caused all this. And then more importantly, like not being afraid because a lot of people are afraid. And that's one of the goals of the Warren Lexi foundation is we want to let people know that you don't have to be afraid of these things. It's not all scary. It is not all scary. And if you have an understanding, a better understanding of how these things happen, then you can take better control of the situation. Right. And speaking of not being afraid of or being afraid, they can actually sense that and use that for their uh, purpose. For, you know, yeah. Well, that makes them that's stronger, the stronger. Yeah. Yeah. You said, <laughs> say. no, that's, that's true, word. though. It's true though, you start feeding these energies and um, you know, they feed off of that and they get stronger. You give them you give them the power. And it's up to us to try to help you take that power, take control and say, look at no, I'm in control. All right, that's it. Because when it comes to like actual demonic entities, biblically speaking, ecclesiastically speaking, we have control and dominion over them. All right. Whether you believe that or not, that's fine. I'm not here to preach, but we do have that. It's the human spirits that are a little harder to get rid of because we have free right. will. God made us with free will. And so if you're a jerk when you're alive, guess what? You're probably going to be a jerk when you die. Um, oh, thank you, Kelly. That means a lot. Um, yeah, thanks, Kelly. Um, I mean, it's it's not it's not all scary stuff. I mean, you know, like the cases that we deal with in the foundation. Um, yeah, they can be scary and they sound crazy. 
you know, we, um, we'll get these reports, you know, we'll, we'll get these questionnaires. We'll get these reports um, for applicants that say, I've got this going on. And they'll give like this whole elaborate details about what's going on. And when we get to it, we start dissecting this case piece by piece. Come to realize that at the end of the day, 90% of the cases, most of the clients that we've encountered have an undiagnosed mental illness. Uh, and to me, it's always been about, you know, taking care of yourself. So far for me, in yes. my professional experience, most of it has been psychological illnesses. And the other, you know, 10% is a mixture of true hauntings and true demonic possession, that type of stuff. But most of it, 90% of it, I would say, is psychological. Yeah, I totally agree on that. <laughs> See, anybody else have any more questions for us? By all means, let us know. Well, I mean, I'll do the very best I can. Yeah, I'll do the very best I can to, to answer questions. I mean, you know, um, the great thing about the War Legacy Foundation is that, you know, we pride ourselves in, you know, carry on the, carry on the work carrying on the work of Ed and Lorraine Warren, um, you know, and times have changed, you know, times have changed in the best new, there's new investigative methods, new equipment, different techniques, and that's all wonderful. Um, and all that, I think it's, it's good. And it's for the better enrichment of this field. You know, for me, it's like, I, I'm a paranormal investigator. I'm a researcher. I'm not a ghost hunter. Okay. I'm going to treat ghosts with respect. I'm not going to go out there. I'm not going to taunt you. I'm not going to treat you like an animal in the zoo. You know, perform this jumping trip for me and I'll give you some peanuts. We don't do that. <laughs> I mean, we don't do that. You know, you need to respect the living and you also need to respect the dead. And if you're out here causing trouble and if you're out here thinking that just because you've got a million people on your YouTube channel that you're a good investigator, you're not. You know, um, it, it, you have to be humble. You have to be professional and you definitely have to be ethical in your approach when you're dealing with people. You know, um, I saw a post the other day that someone says people need to stop complaining about the paranormal field because it should be fun. They shouldn't all be taken seriously. I get it. I get it. You know, sometimes you want to have fun, but that's what determines that type of person. That's what determines uh, 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 an amateur investigator from a real dedicated professional. Let's see, I've had a dark energy follow me from childhood. The thing is, you need to learn and work on who is in charge. My line of work is because of my childhood. Being humble is, is key as well. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, and, and most of us, I, I'd like to think, you know, when everybody says that, when people say that they have a dark energy following them, we all do. Okay, it's or, not or just subjective. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's not subjective to, to one individual. You know, we are honestly in a spiritual battle. And every day we go out, every day we go out, you know, we are being followed. We are being watched, you know, by whatever energies, you know, it's out there. They know who we are. They can sense it, you know, and it's up to us to guard ourselves and protect ourselves. So, I, you know, but as Kelly said, you are in control. You don't let it dictate your life. Yeah, Exactly. Yes, we do. It's about how you deal with it and the energy. And exactly. That's exactly what I was getting ready to say. That's how you do it. And that's the most important thing. And for me, that's, that's, that's the key. That's the key factor in a successful um, investigation, you know, in talking to our clients about how to do certain things. You know, we have a lot of people that will come to us and we'll give them, we'll give them the tools that they need to succeed, but they don't want to put it in the work. It doesn't work like that. You know, we're not a Tylenol. We're not a one-stop shop. You, know, you got to put in the work yourself. And then I've had people that are like, well, you know, the other team did this too, and it, it's not working. It's not working because you don't care. It's not working because you're not putting the intention in it. It's not working because you're tired and you're not in the right state. And so it's not going to work, obviously. It's you like prayer, not going to work. Yeah. You know, it's, it's intention. And just because yeah. we pray for something to happen doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be in our favor. You know, people think uh, there's, a, there's this false sense of hope that, has been taught in churches that if I have faith and I pray to God that everything will be given to me. No, that's not how that works. You know, faith, using faith as, as, as a controlling technique to God, that, that's considered a form of paganism. That's paganism. Okay. God is sovereign and he is in control. No matter what we say, no matter what we do, no matter how we pray, it's not going to control him. It's not going to change his mind. We come into this relationship with God because he loves us. He sent his son to die on the cross 
blah, blah, blah. You guys get the story, but that's what separates Christianity from paganism. So you just got to be careful with a lot of, you know, those factors as well. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. So yeah, intent that's... is everything. And so, and so that's what I mean. So the intent yeah. is everything. So yeah, you can pray and, and ask these things to happen, but they may not always go according to your will. They may not go according to how you plan. You know, there is a divine creator and that divine creator. Or maybe no you're not who we, ready for it yeah. yet. Or, something. or maybe you're not ready for it yet. That's exactly, you know, maybe you're just not ready for it yet. You know, um, a lot of the times with the spiritual battle and like the demonic possession, a lot of it is done to for glorification of God. You know, we are we have people that they dabble with the occult, they mess with the Ouija board, and they get possessed, but ultimately at the end of the day, you know, the afflicted will become free. And a lot of it is just to show that there is power in what we believe in. Like, I, I, I respect different belief systems, and, and I'm not ignorant to the fact that there's over 3,000 belief systems in the world. But, you know, my belief system has proven to be true throughout historical records, different biblical scriptures, um, archaeological evidence from scientists and doctors that prove that Jesus Christ did walk this earth, um, along with many other things. So I just stick to what I know. Um, I tell people, just stick to what your faith is. But as long as you have the good intention and you're doing it to better yourself and help other people, I, I don't care what you believe in or what you practice. Yep, right on. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Shelly says exactly. <laughs> and speaking of Ouija boards, I was just going to ask you about that. What are your thoughts about the Ouija board? I mean, are they like the root cause the most hauntings or no? Stay away from them. Stay away from Ouija boards. I don't like them. And if you're going to mess with the Ouija board, make sure that you are with someone who knows how to conduct a proper spirit communication. Simple as that. You know, um, and it's the same way with with EVPs. It's the same with REM pods. Oh, yeah. You know, it's a form. It's a form of spirit communication. Right. Uh, just like seances, too. It's all a form of spirit communication. You just you don't know what you're going to get on the other side of that. Chances are you'll probably never encounter something, which is a good thing. All right. That means that it wasn't meant for you, it, it, that it's you're not the victim or you're not the intended target, so to speak. But there is also a key vulnerability to that, that people who mess with the Ouija board are looking for a quick fix. And once you're looking for that quick fix, there's an intention behind it that's negative in nature. And you're probably bound to get something negative on the other side. So just stay away from them, you know, but if you are going to use them, just be cognizant about them and be safe with them. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be calling us. Yeah. I yeah. Agree. yeah. Yeah. And it's the same thing with, with seances. Um, I tell people, you know, be careful with seances. Uh, there's a couple of people that I know that um, conduct seances, good psychic mediums. I, I, I trust them. Like I, I trust Patty Negri. I trust April. Uh, I, you know, I, I know Cindy Kay's, I don't know. Hey, April, I had April. Yeah, I, I love her. She's awesome. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, make sure you are with people that are reputable if you're going to be conducting a seance. Because here's the difference between a seance and the Ouija board. They're both forms of spirit communication, but the, with the Ouija board, it's more so of the person and maybe two or three people. And, and, and you know, you might get something or you may not. But with the seance, you're actually all holding hands together. You're closing your eyes and you are focusing your energy. And the stronger that energy is, the stronger that that psychic trance medium is going to be channeled. And so guess what? If that psychic trance medium is being empowered by your energy, chances are that that energy on the other side is going to be empowered by your energy as well. So just be careful with any form of spirit communication. That's what I yeah. tell people. Just be careful. I've been guilty of it done before and you know young you know better but now it's like I'm cautious about it <laughs> yeah I mean just be cautious so. I mean you know why, why take why take the risk if you don't have to I mean exactly. just to prove a point you know it's like why take a risk what just to prove a point well I don't believe the Ouija board's real well I'm gonna go ahead uh FRL to find out okay cool then guess what you come under possession I always say about haunting Mm. Uh, I always say yeah. instead of a Ouija, just play Monopoly or something. <laughs> play Monopoly, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, don't risk it. Take it. Don't take your chances. Exactly. <laughs> mm. I'm almost done with my Mexican pizza. 
Sorry, everybody. Oh, that's ministry, dumb. Yeah. Ministry, ministry, ministry. Yeah, exactly. Don't play with the dead. Don't play with the dead because yeah. the chances are, you know, they are dead. And they all play better games than you. Um, so it, it, Hollywood has made it to where all the spirit communication and the Ouija board and stuff is cool. And, and I get it. There's a fascination. There's a fascination to find out with what's on the other side. Okay. And if you're going to explore these things, if you're going to delve into the supernatural realm, just make sure you're well prepared for the repercussions. There might not be any repercussions. You know, you might and not it could any... be, uh, like my man, it could be long term attachment. Yeah. Yeah. Because these energies, honestly, these energies don't operate off our space and time continuum. So five days, five years for us can be just five days for them, you know? And so you don't, you just want to be careful. I mean, just messing with spirit communication in general and, and the Ouija board, it's a recipe for disaster. Just stay away from it. And, and, or and any device. device yeah. Or any device, right? Just be, be cognizant <laughs> and be smart about it. It gets me. I have a lot of people that say, well, you know, I've messed with the Ouija board a million times and nothing's ever happened to me. Okay, well, that's good. You're lucky. Don't be arrogant because that one time you'll do it, 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 it may be the last time that, you know, you ever want to mess with it. You know, um, I, I have a lot of good teammates in the foundation, good psychic mediums, uh, witches, pagans. Um, they're really good with these things. And even most of them say, I just don't want to take that chance with that particular device the ouija board has caused so much chaos throughout history i don't know why i i think maybe it's just the lore behind it you know and who knows if these really were demons you know but you know the effects of this ouija board the different ouija boards have caused astronomical psychological effects on people to where they have gone crazy full psychosis schizophrenia psychological disorders and even suicide don't mess with these things. Don't right. mess with the supernatural if you don't know. Oh, you have to do your homework too. I always mm -hmm. say that. Or get another group of friends. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, do your research. You know? Do your do your research. Oh, yeah. Like you, yeah. Yeah. Learning to know Haley. Yes, her students. Yeah. To leave them alone. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. I, I like yeah. that, Kelly. Yeah, I mean. There's, there's a proper way to conduct spirit communication hmm. and it can be done in, in a respectful, in a, in a respectful way. Um, always be respectful, right? Always set your boundaries, always have guidelines, you know, and always have good positive intentions and make sure that you are in the correct state or the proper state of grace In the clergy, you know, religious reasons, we call it state of grace. You know, but state of grace can be also translated into a good mindset and a good spiritual stronghold, right? Make sure you're spiritually safe, you're spiritually guarded, you're spiritually you're spiritually grounded, and that you're not dealing with any family issues, depression, anxiety, that type of stuff. Um, you know, and then I think that once you have those in play, and you are attempting spirit communication, and you are a psychic medium, trans medium, I think that you're going to have a wonderful and lovely experience with these things. But me, excuse me, I, I, I don't mess with these things because it's against uh, my code of ethics because I'm clergy. I don't mess with spirits. You know, that's not my thing. You know, I don't call yeah, I out prefer... them. I don't, I, don't, I, I don't conjure them. I don't do any of that stuff. Um, my job is to fight the negative energy. Um, and I'm right. cognizant that there are um, beings out there or, or you know, <clears throat> ghosts, so to speak, and they're not all bad. I know that. They're not all bad. It's not all demonic. But my job is just to help rid the client of whatever issue there is. Yes. Be in a perfect mind and perfect place. Perfect. Yes. It's like even before I do readings or whatever, um, I try yeah, to yeah. do meditations, set that boundary, and also have that um, you know, white light is the best form method for me personally. <laughs> As a psychic, I don't really use that anymore. So I didn't use my you own want, gifts. You always want to surround yourself with the white light. Yeah. Always surround yourself with the white light, lower protection, 
like for me, I use Palo Santo, I use Florida water, I use holy water, I use holy oil. So it's always important to be well protected and guarded. Oh, look at that. <laughs> so how do I fight negative energy? Uh, well, it just all depends. Um, it all depends the situation. It all depends the case. Uh, for me, though, like if I'm dealing with negative energy, like I'll pray, I'll take a nice hot shower. Uh, you know, if I can, I'll take a bubble bath. You know, I'll soak it in milk and uh, rosemary, it just like fruitful things. I'll pray, I'll meditate, I'll come out, um, I'll bless my house with holy oil and holy water, uh, turn on some incense, wonderful music, open the windows up, let some light in. That's how I deal with uh, negative energy. And I don't give it power. And I just, most of the time, I ignore it. But there are times when you can just feel it. You're like, okay, you know, I, just, I feel heavy today. You know, something's not right. You know, I think we all get that feeling. You're like, you know what? I leave it at the front door. You come home, you take off your clothes, you shower, you do what you got to do. And, and you get yourself recentered and grounded. Yeah. Right. And for me, I like to use sage, white sage. <clears throat> yeah, um, sage is good. Even though it's, it's <clears throat> like it's short term, but I do that daily basis. Well, I mean, sage is good. Sage, sage is good. Sage is good. You know, I think there's black salt. You know, a lot of black other people salt. I know, they... They use crystals like black tourmaline. They'll use rose quartz. Uh, they'll use amethyst. So there's a lot of I have different ways. That's not, that's actually my birthstone color. I love it. So, yeah. I and uh, so I love it. You know, and and for me, you know, it's all about setting the proper. In, it, I love it. It's all about setting the proper intention. You know, it's all about setting the proper intention and. Yes, and <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Intention is key. And, you know, I, I tell people, look, I, I don't care what you believe in. I don't care what you worship. But if you're going to go out there, you're going to help people just have good intentions and have a really good heart and, and be honest and ethical about it. And if there's something that's out of your scope of the ability, don't do it. You know, reach out to someone else who can help you out. Even though it's kind of tempting, else... but yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. 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 It can be that's tempting it. to try to, you know, uh, we sometimes we don't want to go over our heads and it happens you know yeah. i've made that mistake we've all we've all made mistakes and, and and i'm not calling anybody out you know we're not perfect that's the human nature side of us. sometimes we go in over our heads and we don't realize it until it's too late uh, let's see uh one time i was working amy allen and had my waters i went to grab it and the water had disappeared our plant with us pretty well oh, it's crazy that is nuts that would that you know that's an experience like no other i, I could not imagine that that's crazy like that is crazy. So like it dissipated completely. Oh wow! Are oh, you guys in Massachusetts? You guys park your car right. in the driveway. Yeah. Here. Yeah. 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 You, you guys park your car in the driveway over there in Massachusetts. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I've got family back east anyway. Uh, yeah, no, I would be freaking out too, Kelly. I would be freaking out. Uh, which oils to use cleanse your home? Is it eucalypt? You know, eucalypt. Actually, eucalyptus. Eucalyptus, Steffi, uh, eucalyptus is good. Uh, my wife, uh, when she takes a shower, sometimes when I'll take a shower, we have eucalyptus oil. Yeah, yeah, let's see. Uh, Harvard Yard, I like it. <laughs> uh, Kelly, I'm going to be in Salem uh, in uh, July, actually. Yeah, that's on my bucket doing, list. Yeah, I'm going to be doing a lecture. I'm going to be doing the USS. Uh, I'm going to be doing a lecture at the USS Salem uh, with David Childers, uh, July 1st. Oh, I would love veterans. to go. But, you'd like but to going back. But going back to uh, 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 going back to Steffi, eucalyptus, uh, eucalyptus is good. You can use eucalyptus oil when uh, you take a shower. It's wonderful. It smells lovely. I like lavender. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's not in Salem. It's like forty-five minutes out. I thought it was um, because it was a because it was a USS Salem. It'd be in Salem, but I found out it's not. But I'm excited to be going out there. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be for uh, the National Association of Homeless Veterans. So July 1st, we're going to be doing an event there with uh, Larissa Rex and um, David awesome. Childers. And all of the proceeds will be going to the homeless veterans organizations. <laughs> awesome. Um, Thank you so much for your services, by the way. Oh, it's all good. You know, um, <laughs> thank those who never made it back. But, you know, <laughs> yes. um, you know, the, the, the paranormal field is a wild field because there's different facets of, of, of activity that happens. I mean, you know, you have your regular investigators, you have your hunters. I mean, so there's space for everybody in, in this paranormal field. Um, 
You know, the paranormal unity thing, I don't really buy into it. The the truth is it's you have people that are in this field that shouldn't be in this field and they're giving out bad information and bad advice. And I cannot stand that. Yeah. My face would just turn on by itself and I went to your life. Whoa. Nice. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's, That's uh, crazy. Redlands, I always like to say. Yeah. Sometimes we just live in a paranormal state. <laughs> Speaking of bucket list, do you have any other bucket list you like to go through? Well, you know, yeah. uh, well, I tell you what, though, uh, Salem, Massachusetts, it's on Salem. my list, and I'm going to be there uh, in a few months, and I am excited for that. Um, so I want to go to the Conjuring House just to oh. prove that it's not haunted because I am still tired. I am so tired of people trying to charge a thousand dollars. Are you going to Alcatraz, Kelly? I live in San Francisco. I I've been there. Francisco. I've been there at least. Yeah, yeah. I live by San Francisco, Kelly. Just uh, let me know uh, when you're out here, and uh, I can meet up with you and my wife, and we can uh, go hang out and have like We're a little paranormal neighbors. reunion. Yeah, yeah, paranormal reunion. Yeah. No, how do you know whether there are bad spirits? All right, let's see. Oh, March twentieth, my birthday. Awesome. You know what? I might actually not be here March 20th. I have another kid. I'm working two cases happy in birthday. New York. But happy birthday. Uh, how do you know whether there are bad spirits or someone sending you negative energy at, the, at a distance? Um, so for me, I'm not a psychic medium, Steffi. Uh, so I couldn't be, I, I'm not knowledgeable or qualified to tell you that. You just know. I, 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 I can just give you what I think, just like, um, you know, Nicole said. I, I think sometimes you just know. But you don't want to pay too much mind uh, to on whether or not it's a curse or someone is sending you something, because I find that if you focus on that too much, it's going to drive you nuts. Um, so the thought process, tulpa and egregore, is a, a thing that's come out in the paranormal oh, community. Like, uh, <laughs> You're yeah, yeah. my mind. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So um, tulpa and egregores, you know, um, these are beings that we've created and we've given them power. Uh, same thing is. Same thing is true for a curse. Um, exactly. I believe that if you believe that you are cursed, then that's probably what's going to happen. And your door just opened. Oh, is that paranormal or what? No, that's my cousin somebody. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, but I may add, it has. I had her not so there was nobody there. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. so Steffi, I, I wouldn't pay too much mind to it. Um, and, and I'll tell you what, Steffi, um, there's a lot of good resources out there. Um, a lot of uh, like April Bus said, you can talk to Nicole Gaspard. Um, there's a couple of different psychic mediums that I know. Uh, they'd probably be able to put you in the right track and helping you understand that more. Um, my, yeah, like I said, my, yeah, like my job honestly is just to like, boom, I'm going to go in. I'm going to, I'm going to devour that. I'm going to devour. I'm going to crush it. You know, we're going to go and we're going to just completely break the mold and we're going to go ahead and we're going to break everything down. And we're going to get down to the root cause. And once we get down to that root cause, you're going to see that it's not as paranormal or it's not as scary as you thought it was. So we're meticulous. Uh, we ask a lot of annoying questions. Uh, at least I do. <laughs> not my, hey, Aurora. It's I me. <laughs> hey, Aurora. How are you? How are you doing, Shadow Squire? All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's my Shadow Squire. So I, I do have a Patreon that uh, oh, yeah, yeah. that I teach. I have a I have a Patreon that I teach. I have uh, three different levels. Uh, the We're first two parties. levels are, yeah. So the first two levels are spiritual guidance uh, because I'm a chaplain. So you'll get like uh, you know one on one with me, and then the third level that I have is called the Shadow Squire level. And at Shadow Squire level, I am teaching my students on the basics and introduction to demonic possession, mental illness, psychological illness, how to identify when someone is lying, and to better protect yourself against the supernatural and the occult. And so we're focused more on the darker side of things. So by focusing on the darker side of the paranormal, uh, you will be a guiding light to those who are in darkness. Yes. I'm all caught up now. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. Yes, yes. So, uh, I'll put my uh, I'll, I'll put my Patreon on here if you like. Um, sure. And you can share it, Nicole. Yeah, by all means. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let me let me put that on here. Because and then not only that though, you get access to um, you get access to the Discord server, and then the Discord server I will be putting. Uh, you know, I'll have a I have a chapel, Father Ken's chapel, where you can come if you want prayer. I can pray for you if you want some chaplaincy. 
I'll provide some chaplaincy for you. Uh, then I'll give you, you know, the, the, the two levels, I'll give you an exorcist case study. And then uh, we'll go you, into, Kelly. yeah, yeah. And then we'll go into the, the darker side of things. But w- what I do is I give you exorcist case studies. I'll put random exorcist case studies and I'll throw that case out there. And I want to see a critical analysis and see how you think. Um, and I'm not training people to become an exorcist. You can't do that. You've got to be a clergy. I don't uh, think you know. I would. <laughs> yeah, no. What, but what I'm what I'm training people to do I'm is how to ident- But what I'm training people to do is how to identify. I'm educating people on how to identify the elements of a haunting, a true demonic possession, and what to look for, and how to better protect yourself and be equipped. Yeah, Stephanie. And on yeah, that note, awesome. on yeah. that note, um, I was just yeah. going to ask, what do you look for in a case such as case that might be a demonic? Well, I'm looking for all the telltale signs, you know. I'm looking for floating, talking in different languages, crawling and walking on walls, knowing things about you that they shouldn't, knowing the past, mimicking of voices, you know, of loved ones, of deceased ones, that deep guttural loud, a growl. I'm looking for signs and symbols and sigils scratched over your body. I'm looking for contortions. Those are true signs of demonic possession, you know what I mean, with the supernatural element. Not to be confused with psychosis and schizophrenia. Because schizophrenia in the form of psychosis can mimic demonic possession. But it's the supernatural elements that we're looking for, the aversion to religious objects. And that's what scares me the most when they can mimic. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, they can mimic. I mean, it, it's, it's crazy stuff, but, uh, and it can be scary. And, and so that's what I'm, that's what my goal is. My goal, look, I'm not here to be famous. I don't care about these other famous celebrity clergy. That's not my thing. You know, I'm going to give you the truth how it is. Whether it hurts your feelings or not, I don't care. I'm going to say it from a place of love and I'll be respectful about it. But sometimes you just got to be, you, sometimes you got to be checked. And that's the problem with people in this field. People are always here and they want to be people pleasers. I am not a people pleaser. I am not here to please you. I'm not here to make you happy. I am here to give you my subjective truth. I'm here to tell you what I know, how I know, and h- how to combat these things. And if you want to take that advice, that's fine. If not, you can go over to YouTube and follow these other channels where they have paranormal activity all the time and they leave the clients hanging. You know, that's up to I you. I really have your advice, <laughs> yeah. to be honest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, li- yeah I-, I like Kelly. Uh, the truth the truth hurts. The truth hurts at times. And, yeah. and you, you got to be truthful in this field. Like, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not into this field for games. Uh, I don't care... Yeah, I'll go to a haunted place. I'll go to a haunted location with friends, whatever, you know, never alone. But like if it's an event, but I got to be invited, you know what I mean? I'll go. But look, I'm not going to pay $500 to go in, uh, invest or investigate a place. I'm not going to do that. Come on now. Are you crazy? I am not going to pay money to go investigate a haunted location. I am not. I'm sorry. You got to be nuts. I am frugal. I am cheap. Yeah, I totally I am agree. Not, I am I'm not going to pay $1,000 to go visit the Conjuring house. You're crazy. You're nuts. Mm-hmm. I bet you there's nothing there. And even when, and even if there is something there, it's subjective to the individual who are there. If you get attacked at the Conjuring house, it's because you're opening yourself up to these elements. And, you know, and I think, and I think that maybe at one point in time, the, the Conjuring house was clear, but with ugh, these dumb asses of owners allowing people coming into their house with Ouija board and seances and disrespecting them. Yeah. I, I don't like that. And I'm sorry if you're listening, Corey or whatever your wife's name is. I, I think it's the dumbest thing. I think it's rude. I think it's pretty um, dangerous too. It's pretty mm-hmm. dangerous to allow people to come into your house and record these things and go live on YouTube and conjure up spirits. It's stupid. It's dumb. I and you know what that. happens? You play stupid games and you win stupid prizes, which is why they were having a, a failing marriage, which is why they're having marital issues, which is why they're trying to sell the house for a million dollars. You know, and I don't care. You can come at me uh, any way you want. And I give you the truth because I am sick and tired of these stupid places promoting these activities, which can lead somebody to potentially lose their life. It's dumb. Now, there was a documentary. There was a documentary that was done on um, Amazon Prime Video, uh, "The Restless Unseen." I think that was a good documentary. The investigators that are there, I think they did a good job. 
I'm friends with them. Uh, but they also know that there's certain ways that they do things that I don't like. And it's not, everyone has got their own investigative method. I think that that one on the Conjuring House was done really well, uh, this one in general. Uh, but all of the other ones, it, it's it's dumb. It, it's it's Most of it is like Hollywood anyway, compared to... Yeah, if, if yeah, I, yeah. I mean, are you going to allow someone to come into your house and set up equipment and mess stuff up and call spirits? You're opening your house up more. You're opening everything up. It is just, it is, uh, it is the dumbest. That is not paranormal investigator. You don't. And then, and then here's the thing: how are you going to be? How are you going to be stupid to investigate your own house? Don't investigate your own house. I'm sorry, that is stupidity. You do not investigate your own house ever. You do not communicate with spirits in your house ever. If you have a feeling there's something there, you ignore it and you call somebody else. But exactly, your house can be haunted, but you don't press it. Don't engage with it. You know, I, I get really fired know, up when yeah. it comes to the con. I get really no fired worries. up when it comes to the. I get really fired up when it comes up to the Conjuring House and it comes to all these stupid locations where people are like, "Oh, it's haunted! It's haunted!" No, it's not. It's not, you know, or people, they, they try to push these things off as, oh, my gosh, it's it's oh, it's it's scary. Look, um, I have my opinions on 28 days and I won't say nothing because that is family related to to Chris. Yeah, but, no uh, worries. You definitely don't take off your shirt and scream at demons. That's not how you fight demons. And I'll leave it at that. OK. Yeah. Take a look <laughs> at what what was the one uh, when the devil made me do it. That's a prime yeah. example of what happened. Yeah, yeah, the devil made me do it. Um, you know, I'm actually dealing with two cases like that uh, in, in New York State right now. Um, there is a young boy who has been tormented by these negative energies, and he is currently in a hospital suffering. So we have to go out there and do something for the family. So um, I let them live their own ways. Nice. 1849? Yeah, same here. It's uh, 657. Yeah. Oh, wow, the hours slow by. Yeah. <laughs> Oh some of the haunted some of the haunts in my house they're residual but there's no yeah, well, yeah get... and that's oh, yeah and that's the way to, and that's the way to do it just you know don't engage just let it go you know just ignore it yeah yeah, yeah. definitely don't give yeah. any, any attention yeah well yeah i mean the, the truth is is like you know we are intertwined with this spiritual realm you know um and yeah there's nothing to be afraid of there's nothing to be scared about like for me, the supernatural, the paranormal, is my everyday normal. So, same here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we have time for another question. I may. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Have you ever come uh, yeah. across? Sorry. Oh, uh, right, I can see your comments. Yeah, we can. Wherever. Uh, can have you ever come across like any other unworthy creatures? Let's say like the Wendigo or Bigfoot or Shadow people. Oh, so I believe yeah. I believe in cryptoids. I believe in cryptoids. I believe yeah. in Wendigos. Uh, I, I believe in skinwalkers. Um, I was in New Mexico uh, a few years ago for an event for a veterans organization, and I was out there for a, a week on a retreat. Um, and we were told not to go outside our bunkhouse after a certain time because there were certain things that may have happened. Um, and so I asked, you know, they knew I was the paranormal. And one of the one of the groundskeeper was a Native American shaman. He was helping out. And I asked him about the skinwalker. He, and he got upset with me. He goes, you're disrespectful. Don't you ever ask about the skinwalker? Because he was a skinwalker Navajo police officer. His, his specialty was dealing with skinwalkers. Um, so I believe in these things. Uh, growing up in Puerto Rico, too, I've seen the Chupacabra. Uh, I've seen alien beings. But once again... You know, those are my memories, and I don't know if it has to deal with childhood trauma, but I remember seeing these things. Yes, I believe in all of these things. I would say if I ever see Bigfoot or the Black Eyed Kids, I might think. <laughs> it's like, look, if you're going to believe in witches and demons, how are you not going to believe in aliens that- and, 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 and cryptoids? Just like people tell me, well, I don't believe in demons, but you believe... You don't believe in angels and demons. Or UFOs, for that matter. Or UFOs, but you believe in your little magic board and conjuring up magic. Uh, you believe in some sort of supernatural element, but you don't believe in the other. You can't not just believe in one thing and not believe in the other. And a word, yeah. it's my question, so I'll let you answer. 
<laughs> yeah. So the chupacabra for me, it was a, it was a, it was a, an experience because I was outside with my, uh, visiting my grandmother's house. It was actually my aunt's house. Uh, not my grandmother. I was with my grandmother, my other grandmother from my father's side. And uh, we looked outside. I looked outside in the middle of the night and I couldn't sleep. Uh, and I looked at the corner and I saw this green type shape figure thing with a long tail. And I told my aunt about it and she goes, apparently, you know, that was a chupacabra and I've seen it. And then uh, the next day we woke up, the dog was dead and he had two puncture oh, wow. wounds in his throat. And, yeah. I want to do a quick shout out to um, where I got the shirt. I won the shirt free on a trivia game from uh, Jim Carroll uh, Campfire. <laughs> okay. So I want to give him a well, shout out. And, and I appreciate you. Uh, appreciate the Paranormal Corner. Appreciate the Paranormal Corner. I appreciate Studio Six, uh, the Parapost Network. Thank yeah, you guys, thank for, you guys. For, for having me on. Thank you, Nikki, for having me on. Anytime. I mean, yeah, I mean, anytime you want, you know, you got me. So I'm sorry that our time is running out, and thank you guys so much for being with us no. tonight. And we should be back next week, and I'll have another fellow psychic medium that's myself so um has nice. been a super i believe and uh no. so i love talking to the other psychics that should be interesting appreciate it kelly i don't know i don't know if we're connected but um yeah kelly swangler.com i'm also uh you can look at me up i have my own website father ken doctor.com it's actually spelled out all the way father ken doctor.com um and, but you can also hit me up here on facebook and uh, I'm pretty sure we'll have some mutual friends. Yeah, and we'll, thank be, you so um, much. we'll have some uh, videos shortly after this and also on Anchor and Spotify. <laughs> and all your listening John, devices. John, thank you so much for tuning in, John. Thank I just you want to guys. say that you thank are a you, warrior, Aurora. that you are strong. Thank you, Aurora. Have an awesome night. Have a good night, everybody. God bless. Thank you, Peace. Father. Yeah, thank you. Good night. Thank you, guys. See you next week.